Hi, this is Amy Picklesheimer. I'm one of the maternal fetal medicine specialists at the Greenville Health System, and I'm going to talk about the fetal circulation uh, and Doppler studies. We all know that the fetal circulation is different from the adult circulation. This is our baby. It's connected by uh, the umbilical cord to the placenta. So usually think about the fetal circulation starting in the placenta where we have um, the maternal interface and the baby picks up the um, oxygenated blood and returns it from the placenta to the uh, fetus where it enters through the ductus venosus in the fetal liver. So basically the blood is bypassing um, uh, all the metabolic functions of the liver by emptying through the ductus and going straight uh, into the IVC and into the heart. From the fetal heart on that right side the ductus venosus enters into the IVC and into the right side of the fetal heart. As the blood comes out of the fetal heart you have the ductus arteriosus that helps shunt the blood past the um, pulmonary circulation where it also joins the blood coming from the left side of the fetal heart going out to the baby's body. You're also pushing your deoxygenated blood from the baby to the placenta through two um, umbilical arteries. So you have two umbilical arteries carrying deoxygenated blood to the um, placenta and then you have an umbilical vein returning uh, the most highly oxygenated blood to the baby. So we mainly use Doppler studies to help us assess babies that are having growth restriction or other reasons why um, they'd be having abnormal, abnormal growth. So the first vessel that we interrogate when we're looking at growth restricted babies is the umbilical artery. And the reason that we start here is because it, it reflects um, resistance in the placenta. So normally the placenta is a super low flow or low resistance system so that the blood is constantly moving from the baby towards the placenta during systole as well as during diastole. As you begin to get increased resistance in the placenta the speed of the blood slows down during diastole so you begin to see a bigger difference in the speed between systole and diastole and that would be called uh, elevated or increased umbilical artery SD ratio and then if it really is significant you can have absent end diastolic flow which mean the, means the blood in the umbilical artery is actually stopping between heartbeats or you can have reverse flow in the umbilical artery where the blood instead of moving forward towards the placenta throughout the entire cardiac cycle is actually moving backwards towards the baby um, in the cardiac cycle. So what this looks like when we measure it is you always have a baseline and in normal Dopplers in the umbilical artery you have kind of this sinusoidal looking pattern. So this peak here represents the speed of the blood at systole and this lower peak here represents the speed of the blood at diastole. And so typically what we're looking at is the ratio um, between systole and diastole. And that has a normal curve by gestational age so we can look it up on a standard table to see if it's within normal range or, or if it's elevated. If you get far enough along where you have abnormalities, the pattern that would look like this would be absent and diastolic flow so that you see no flow above the baseline during diastole. And if you have reverse flow we actually start to see a little bit of blood coming, um, going the opposite direction below your baseline um, during diastole. So this is absent and this is reverse. So the next vessel that we can interrogate to look at um, signs for utero placental insufficiency is actually the middle cerebral artery. So you can see um, the blood that's coming out of the fetal heart across the ductus as well as from the left ventricle. The first place that it goes is up towards the intracranial circulation. Uh, typically in normal uh, intracranial circulation you have a much higher um, flow during systole 
at a much lower um, flow during diastole when you compare um, umbilical artery Doppler studies. So usually your SD ratio is much higher for the middle cerebral artery. Again, you can see for the middle cerebral artery that you have a peak with systole, and you have a smaller measurement here above the baseline with diastole. So a lot of times what we talk about when we look at the middle cerebral artery, you can look at the SD ratio and you can actually compare the middle cerebral artery SD to the umbilical artery SD and a ratio over 1.5 would be normal because you want to see a normal difference in this uh, slower movement of the blood during diastole. But a lot of times we also talk about the pulsatility index. So the pulsatility index is um, systole minus diastole over the mean pressure um, throughout the cardiac cycle. So you can kind of, in this example, the mean would be somewhere about here. And the ultrasound machine will calculate that for you automatically once you make your measurements of systole and diastole in that area under the curve. So a normal pulsatility index um, should be greater than 1.5 uh, or 1.45. So as long as you have a uh, pulsatility index greater than 1.5, forward flow in your umbilical artery Doppler, especially if it's within normal range, that's a baby that's really not showing any kind of um, uh, hemodynamic stress uh, associated with the growth restriction. So if you find a baby that's at the 10th percentile but has normal Dopplers um, in the umbilical artery in the MCA, that may be a baby that's just constitutionally small. Um, at the same time, if you find a baby at the 10th percentile, uh, maybe this is a, a parent who has a, a mom who's 6 foot and a dad who's 6 5, you wouldn't expect them to have a baby at the 10th percentile. This time when you look at the Dopplers, um, you see absent um, and diastolic flow and maybe your pulsatility index is increased. So that's a sign of a baby that's uh, beginning to show resistance in the placenta um, and some intracranial accommodation um, so that the baby is um, dilating those um, arteries so that you can get increased preferential flow to perfuse the brain, um, um, which is what you see with the asymmetric IUGR. So those are both arterial Dopplers in the baby. The next thing that we can interrogate to see just how much cardiovascular compromise you have um, in that uh, growth-restricted baby that's showing abnormal arterial Dopplers is then you begin to interrogate the venous Dopplers. And so the ductus venosus is uh, the most important vessel that we look at um, to measure that. Ductus venosus has a very different looking waveform than either the umbilical artery or the MCA. You see this kind of characteristic peak with systole. You have sort of a late diastole peak and then a kick for arterial systole. So it's really this kind of very characteristic sort of M shape um, that you see with the um, ductus venosus. So again here, this is systole uh, of the ventricle, this is um, diastole of the ventricle and early atrial systole, and then you have um, systole for the atria here. This is usually kind of called the little a. Um, so uh, again, as long as you see normal um, flow in this uh, atria with uh, atrial kick, A wave, this little A wave, above the baseline with um, forward flow like you would have here, then that's a baby with um, uh, normal resistance uh, in that uh, ductus venosus. If you see absent flow or you see reverse flow in the ductus, that's a baby that's having so much, um, uh, having to make the heart have to work so hard pushing against the resistance in the placenta that not only is it doing its best to accommodate the um, intracranial circulation, but you're also beginning to see heart failure uh, to where the blood is sort of sloshing backwards during diastole, not only through the arterial circulation, but also into the venous circulation. And then really a late change that you can see are pulsations, all abnormal pulsations in the umbilical vein where you're really seeing compromise of the fetal cardiovascular cycle throughout, um, throughout the um, cardiac cycle. So in summary, when you're evaluating growth restriction uh, in a fetus, uh, and we usually only use these Doppler studies if we're suspecting growth restriction or utero placental compromise in a situation like severe preeclampsia, um, the first place that we go to look uh, is the um, umbilical artery Dopplers. 
And if those are normal, then that's reassuring and we can kind of stop our evaluation there. If the umbilical artery dopplers are normal, then we're looking at the MCA um, pulsatility index. And if that's showing us some type of cranial accommodation, so we're seeing increased placental resistance and intracranial accommodation, the next place that we're going to look uh, is in the ductus venosus to see if there's any changes in the venous system and not just the arterial system. So really the ductus venosus are very late changes, um, and when you have absent or reverse flow in the ductus, um, that's really an indication for uh, delivery in a growth-restricted fetus, really regardless of gestational age. So that's how we can use the fetal circulation to help us judge utero placental resistance uh, and risk for stillbirth and adverse uh, outcomes in babies. Thank you for your time and attention.